Hello, my name is Bernd Hert, and in today's video I'd like to show you the basic installation of SnapSender 3.0 with the HANA plugin. We will start with the installation of SnapSender on a Windows server. Next step to add the storage virtual machines that will be managed by SnapCenter. Then we have to define a user that is used for the later installation of the HANA plugin. The HANA plugin will be installed on a communication host. This could be the server itself or any other Windows or Linux server. And finally, we need to install the HDBC client software on this server so that the plugin can communicate with the HANA database. To start the installation process, we will log on to the Windows server and check the prerequisites. So we will check the Java JDK as well as the network connectivity and DNS resolution of our storage virtual machines. Then we start the single installation file and the installation wizard will start to guide you through the whole process. So first it gives a list of all the components that are required. Then we could activate the network load balancing as an HA feature. Some of the account details is the user, the domain user that will be used as initial administrator within SnapCenter. So this user has to exist in the domain. We will specify the installation folders as well as the communication ports. And we could enable the NAS file services, which we skip in our demo here. For the MySQL database, we need to specify the password. This is the database for the backup catalog and the metadata stored within SnapCenter. And finally, the installation process starts. This will take a while. And after the installation process, it will show the URL where we can reach uh, the SnapCenter GUI, but also creates an icon on the desktop as well. To continue the initial configuration, let's log on to SnapCenter using the user we have specified during the installation. And by pressing the Get Started at the top, an installation and configuration wizard on the right side will guide us through the process. At the first step, we need to specify the storage virtual machines that we need for the primary and the secondary storage. So we will specify the host name and the username and password. So we're using HANA for the primary and we use a storage machine uh, named Backup for the secondary storage. As a next step, we need to specify the credentials of the user that will be used to install the SAP HANA plugin. Since we want to install it on our uh, SnapCenter Windows server, we need to use a Windows user. In that case, we will use the domain administrator and a password and select the authentication Windows. Please note, we could use here also Linux systems or other Windows servers accordingly. That depends on the host type where you later want to install your plugin. After creating the credentials, we now can install a host where the plugin will be deployed. So we leave the host type as Windows. Uh, we could use localhost as the host name that will be resolved to the DNS name later on. And we need to select our credentials user. So first, the installation procedure will check if there are any plugins installed. That's not the case. And we will select the SnapCenter plugin for SAP HANA in addition to the default Windows plugin. Now the pre-installed checks will start 
and if they are finished completely we'll get in summary and start the installation process. That will also take a while. The software will be installed, the service will be created and the plugin will be started. We can monitor this in the monitoring section to follow how far the installation package has been installed already. And after the installation has finished, we can close this and go back to the host to validate uh, the settings. So we see the plugin status is running, the host is up. And the final step is now to install the uh, SAP HANA client software so that the plugin could communicate to the HANA database. Please note the client software has always to be installed on the communication host where the plugin is installed. So we can check that. The client software has been installed in program files SAP HDB client. And as a final step, we have to configure a configuration file for the SnapCenter HANA plugin. Uh, this is the HANA.properties file where you have to add the line so that SnapCenter can find the HDB SQL software. With this, we conclude this little demonstration on how easy it is to install and configure SnapCenter. Hope that will help you. Thanks a lot for watching.